This video has been funded in part by the Guild via Patreon. Check out the links in the description or at the end of this video for more details. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Gildart and welcome back to another Pros vs Cons mini review. Dynasty Warriors 9 serves as a great example of a game that splits the fan base. You have people on both sides of the fence, those who love it and those not so much. And now we have a new Empire's title to take a look at. Personally, I was of the camp that was quite close to the fence. I wouldn't say Dynasty Warriors 9 was necessarily made for me. I reviewed the game back when it first came out, but I gave it a more positive score than I would today. This is one of the reasons why I started the PVC mini reviews. I found trying to get a full review out so quickly can cloud my judgment. The reason I gave Dynasty Warriors 9 such a high score compared to how I feel now is because it was something different. I felt the sheer possibility of an open world Dynasty Warriors game, and I think the potential of the game on paper was one of the reasons why the review ended the way that it did. Now, five years later, we take a look at a game that I honestly didn't think we would get. Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires seemed to be an impossibility to me. It would have taken so many adjustments to the Dynasty Warriors 9 formula just to fit it into the Empire spin-off series. But alas, here we are talking about a game that I didn't think would come out. But before we go too far, don't forget to give this video a like, comment with your thoughts below, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, it's time to find out what Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires has to offer. Ready? Set? Pros. Starting things off, Koei Tecmo must have agreed with my sentiment that it would have been tough transitioning the open world of Dynasty Warriors 9 into an Empire's format because battles now take place in smaller maps. There are two types of battles you'll find yourself in, invasions and defensive battles. They both have some similarities, but they do play out quite differently and are a welcome change to the usual Empire's formula. As far as similarities that differ from both Dynasty Warriors 9 and most Empire's battles, every stage involves a castle or fortress that the invading side is trying to take over. To do so, both sides can implement secret plans. For your own plans, you must meet specific requirements to see it succeed, while for the enemy plans, there are requirements for it to fail. These requirements can be as simple as kill these officers or take over this base. They can also be as complicated as an engineer is hiding in one of the bases, so you need to take out the bases in order to reveal and kill them. While you're invading, you will want to take out the bases in front of the doors to the fortress. This will cause a ram to spawn and start leading an attack. While while that's going on, you can take out the bases around the castle that will also spawn catapults that will attack the posts along the castle walls. While all this is going on, you also have to deal with enemy officers as well as the secret plans that your allies and enemies are trying to execute. If the ram is taking too long to break down the doors, taking over the posts along the walls will allow you to use your grappling hook to scale the walls and open the gates from the inside. The other option is to use siege towers that you can climb and attack the posts yourself. When defending, you want to take out the various siege weapons and officers until you lead your army to the enemy main camp. There is no line that connects the two sides like in previous Empire's titles. The defender just needs to ensure that the castle isn't breached to avoid their commander appearing. The invader just needs to make sure that the enemy doesn't encroach on their main camp. There are also special battles like Guan Du and Shu Bi, but I only played through the Yellow Turban campaign and didn't have that special battle trigger in either of my playthroughs. But overall, I love this format to battles as it makes them feel like you're actually invading or defending rather than each battle feeling the same with just different victory conditions. Now, I mentioned secret plans earlier and there's actually two types of secret plans. The ones that your army executes and equipable ones that you can activate after a cooldown. The second secret plan can be equipped before entering the battle and can be used by holding the left bumper and pressing a direction on the d-pad. These can be attacks that use different elements, a buff to yourself or allies, or it can be a debuff to your enemies. Obviously, since you use your d-pad to activate them, you can only equip up to four at a time, so it's good to mix them up. You'll unlock more by interacting with your officers and winning battles. If you unlock one that you already have, it levels it up to be more effective. As well, sprinting is now automatic. You will start to sprint after you run for a short period of time. You can also sprint while you have your weapon out as you can't put the weapon away during battle. This makes getting around the battlefield so much easier. I also played the demo for this a while back and I didn't like the unit type rock paper scissors mechanic where infantry beats cavalry which beats archery which beats infantry. The issue with this in Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is that you can't swap between two on the fly. Your unit type is tied to your character. In Dynasty Warriors 8 it was tied to the weapon which you could take two into battle and switch on the fly. Now 
now you have to pair with an ally in order to take on that different affinity. In the demo, I found myself being taken away from the action when a strong officer that beat my affinity showed up. I'd have to go running around the map to find somebody else who I could pair with. It broke the flow of combat quite abruptly in my opinion. Though this feature is still present, infantry, cavalry, and archer are not the only unit type you can equip. Other units don't have these weaknesses or strengths. Instead, they give you passive buffs and let you focus on the combat. I really like having this option as it allows the player to choose which system they want to make use of. Now, one thing I mentioned earlier that may have you asking, how does one interact with your officers? Well, that's where I provide the news that the open world isn't totally gone. During the month when you're deciding what you're going to be doing, you can go for a stroll. Your character will enter their casual look and be able to roam the open world talking to officers, both those affiliated with your army and those not affiliated. If you're playing as a ruler or a high enough general, you can offer to recruit these unaffiliated officers. If you're lower on the food chain, you can suggest these officers to the ruler. Depending on the bond that you have with these unaffiliated officers, they may accept or decline your offer. But bonds don't end at recruitment. This is also where you may be able to swear an oath of siblingship or get married. There are other events that'll trigger when your bond is at a certain level. Sometimes an officer will just give you a gift like a gem or a horse or a secret plan other times you'll just have a drink at no cost to your action points and it'll increase your bond even further. If an affiliated officer's bond is a C or higher, you can have them join you as you journey around the land. Besides interacting with officers, you can also take out bandits and animals which will reward you with gold and rations respectively. This is really important because you'll want to balance these resources so that you can achieve victory as everything you do is going to cost gold or rations. Finally, this brings us to the moment I know a lot of you are waiting for. The Empire spin-offs have been known for two main things that we always look out for. First off, the build your own story format of choosing whether you want to play as a vagrant with no leader or a ruler vying for control of the land or even something in between. The other big thing is the character customization and Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires provides one of the most robust customizers yet. There are so many sliders and options here that with enough time and effort, you could probably create a complete lookalike if you wanted to. I had so much fun creating myself, my wife, other Koei and game characters, or even creating new models for generics to be replaced. You also get to choose both clothing as well as armor options. For strolling, you can select which armor still appears, creating the casual look for your custom characters. I do plan on uploading a bunch of these custom characters over on my second channel, Guildark Gameplay, so keep an eye out over there if you'd like to check them out. But that's all the pros I have so far. Now it's time for the Wrath of the Cons! Like I said earlier, Dynasty Warriors 9 wasn't really my game. I think the potential of a hack and slash open world based in the Three Kingdoms is immeasurable, but taking the Dynasty Warrior series in this direction just wasn't the right choice in my opinion. The key component of that is the state combat system, which makes a return in this game. I just find this system so repetitive, almost in a similar way to Dynasty Warrior 6. I find myself just mashing X until I'm told to counter with Y. I still use state attacks by holding the right bumper and pressing one of the face buttons, but I never did it with any sort of strategy. It was always just when I was bored of the current combo I was using. I didn't really expect them to change the system though, so I don't really hold it against Koei for choosing to keep the same combat system as the base game. There are also some additions to Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires that I talked about in the pros that do bring their own cons to the table. First off, with auto sprinting being a thing, I found myself rarely using my horse. I only really needed it if a secret plan had me going from one side of the map to the other. Like every game since Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends, you can hold the left trigger to call your horse and hop on it as it runs runs by. If I were to do this while running to the next objective, my horse might catch up to me maybe about halfway to where I was going. This auto sprint also makes the battlefield maps feel a little bit smaller than they actually are. And if you're playing too well, there may be moments where you just have to sit there and wait as the siege weapons do their thing. I've had it happen a few times where I took over all of the bases, succeeded in my own secret plan, and thwarted the enemies very quickly. Then I just have to sit there and wait for either the ram to break down the door, the catapults to take out the posts along the wall, or the siege siege towers to get set up so I can breach the castle myself. There's really not much you can do to help with the exception of taking out foot soldiers that jump down from the walls to attack. Speaking of the battlefields, the way that the map closes in where the battle is taking place is probably the laziest option they could have gone with. Instead of erecting walls or fences that can't be traversed, they choose to put these translucent white walls that feel very reminiscent of the GameCubes from Reboot. They're not even blended very well and look straight out of a PS1 game. The fog from Dynasty Warriors 9 was a much better way to tell the player 
player that they can't continue without making it ugly. It almost would have been better just to have invisible walls. As well, some of the castles even have barriers partway through them. I really thought this game would utilize the entirety of castles as well as some of the surrounding fields. Then I need to complain about the open world while strolling, because I literally see no point in it. Sure, you can try to knock two birds with one stone by interacting with officers and killing bandits and animals within the same month, but I rarely did the latter while I was strolling. Bandits and animals only drop two gold or rations respectively. You can earn a minimum of 1,000 of a resource in a month by choosing an action from the menu. So to make your month worth doing both, you have to kill at least 500 bandits or animals. This becomes super annoying when you are roaming around and there's just nothing there. The open world in Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires makes the base game feel filled to the brim. I really wish there were enemy outposts in opposing lands that could hurt regional defenses like raiding in previous Empires titles, or have these outposts inhabited by bandits so you actually feel like you're doing something. While strolling, you're also just given a list of officers that you can interact with from a menu, rather than actually running around the map. I would usually choose to do this over actually walking around the land because of how little there was for me to do. Next, I need to mention the edit options for your custom characters. You are given a lot of options on how to shape and mold the face for your characters, and I won't step back from my statement that this is one of the most robust customizers to date, but the options for clothing, and especially armor, feel extremely limited compared to previous Empires games. Most of the options are just parts from generic officers, meaning you will not only be using a lot of the same pieces for your various characters, but that a good chunk of them are already in use by NPCs. On top of that, there isn't much available for body options on either gender. Even at the highest weight settings, both male and female models are still slender and built. I tried to make Dong Zhuo's brother Dong Min, which I usually make a short and fat character to match that of Dong Zhuo's figure. But if I remove his clothing and armor, he looks built like a brick shithouse. I can still make plenty of characters with this customizer, and both DLC and updates are still to come, but what we get for outfit options here is very lackluster. On the topic of DLC, one of the things that instantly disappointed me is that the DLC outfits from Dynasty Warriors 9 are not carried over to Empires like every other entry before it. The only outfits that we get are the casual clothes and any alternate costumes in the base game like Shaho Dun without his eye patch or Taishitsu's purple outfit. This is incredibly disappointing because it would have made me want to play more as the Musou characters when I leaned heavily on my custom characters instead. As well, those characters who received new EX weapons through the base game's DLC now go into battle with those new weapons equipped. The drawback is that no new Musos or special attack animations were created for these characters. Like, a lot of these character animations could have been carried over anyways with the weapons just swapped. I don't understand the decision because it just makes this game look sloppy and lazy. As well, the previous EX weapons like Shu Shu's straight sword or Zhang He's daggers are still equipable, but when you give that character's moveset to a custom character, you can't choose to have them default to the other EX weapon. It's always going to be to their newer movesets. Lastly, I know I mentioned that there's a lot more events in this game than in any other Empire's title, and I really do like that because it makes you feel like you're truly building one of your own stories. The big issue I have is just how short these events are. Like, take a look at this event where Gong Sun Zan is saving a puppy. You know, it's cool and all, but I would have liked to see this event last a little bit longer. Maybe he saves the puppy and gives it to a kid who thanks him for it. Just make it more worth it because each of these small events comes with a loading screen before and after. Sometimes these loading screens take up more time than the actual event itself. Even when you finish a campaign, you are met with a handful of these small events. I don't know why this game can't play them one after another without a loading screen in between each one of them. Like, what you're seeing is not edited in any way. This is absolutely ridiculous. Why is this taking so long? In the end, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is such a weird situation for me. I like a lot of the new additions to what we got in the base game, but I also don't like a lot of others. When I played the demo last year, it really killed my hype for this game. The unit type system and carrying over the same combat of the base game just wasn't fun for me. But once I got my hands on the full game, I actually enjoyed building my own story. But with the exception of creating my own characters and playing through the campaigns, I honestly don't get much enjoyment out of playing this entry. And that's why Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires gets a meh from me. Starting out, I honestly felt like I was going to give this my first thumbs down. At first, 
all I experienced was a lack of refinement. Similar to the base game of Dynasty Warriors 9, this Empire's entry has so much potential, but what we're actually given is lackluster and leaves so much room for improvement. Strolling could have been such a great way to help build your army, giving you the opportunity to gather resources and build friendship with your officers, but it just feels like they built the menu system to omit the open world, then threw the open world back in without making it beneficial to explore. The custom character creator is more robust with facial options, but clothing, armor, and body types feel limited in variety with many old outfits being locked behind DLC and season passes. DLC from the base game not being carried over at all, and of course, the plethora of loading screens bogged down this game's runtime. But as I continued to play through it, actually diving into the characters I was playing as and wanting to make the right decisions to really make my army flourish, these were the things that ultimately immersed me in the overall experience. Though combat is still repetitive, I think I prefer Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires to Dynasty Warriors 9, much like the upgrade we got with Dynasty Warriors 6 Empires. Do I think this saves Dynasty Warriors 9? Not really. I still don't think I'll be actively going back to either of these games with the exception of achievement and trophy hunting. Maybe I'll build some more characters and try to unlock more weapons, but that's about it. If you enjoyed the combat of Dynasty Warriors 9 and can take or leave the open world, I honestly think that you will love this game. But if you're like me and you found yourself just wanting more out of the base game, you may not want to jump directly into this new release. Unfortunately, I also can't say that the demo did a good job selling this game. I really did not like my time playing that demo, but playing this game, I don't mind it at all. Maybe some streams are in order while I work towards the 100%. I still have a lot to play through before a full review, so who knows, maybe my opinion will change over time. But Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires just continues to leave me wanting more out of this series. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe for more. Also, let me know your thoughts on Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires down in the comments below. And you can join the Discord group where you can share your custom characters. If you'd like to help support the channel and what I do here, you can join the guild just like these awesome people that you're seeing on screen right now. You can join their names at the end of every single video for just a dollar a month over on Patreon. Or you can join the volunteer unit over on Coffee. There's other rewards and other tiers as well, so check out the links that you see on screen, and I will see you all down in the comments.